<laughs> so that's the idea. When you put something in the calendar and you give yourself a deadline for it, that's when it happens. That's my experience. I've got really strong feelings about the phrase, just do it, because I think it's really important, and it's really important, the meaning behind it. Because for me, just do it. Do it at any cost. I don't care if your life is falling apart. I don't care if you're losing your kids. I don't care if your relationship is in the toilet. Just do it. You've got to do it. That is not at all the energy, what we mean by just do it, because that feels terrible to me. The, the phrase, never quit, doesn't resonate for me in that same energy. Don't ever quit. You got to, if something isn't working, if you are getting signals that it's not working, try something else. Um, so the feeling behind this just do it is okay. I've got this plan. We're going to walk through some steps. But the only way for it to happen is to start doing it, is to step in and just do it. So do you guys get the difference in feeling between stepping in softly and just do it versus just do it? Mm -hmm. So we're talking about this kind of thing. Just do it. Step in, get your plan, and I won't talk more about it. So when I think of a cost-benefit analysis, I think it, it all goes back to what's your mindset in the owner-blamer. So if I do a cost-benefit analysis from an owner-blamer and I'm really thinking about a plan and really concretely, okay, I've got my personal internal commitment. I know how I want to show up in the world. I know what, how I want to feel along the way to this goal that I've created for myself. So that's, that's that part. So when I'm coming from an owner perspective, I want to know exactly where I stand. Okay, cost-benefit. What are the costs? What are the benefits? I've got this great tool that I can use as an owner to help me, okay, I'm going to need to budget a little bit here. Okay, I'm going to not have my three Starbucks a day, which is $15 a day, which over the course of a month is $450. I could spend that $450 a lot differently by buying some Folgers and making my own coffee. I'm going to spend $30 a month. I'm going to have $420 to spend towards reaching my goal. So I'm fully in support of a cost benefit cost-benefit analysis coming from an owner perspective and using that tool to very concretely say, okay, here's what I got, here's what I have to work with at this moment, what changes do I need to make or how do I need to proceed to get to my goal, all the while keeping in mind, where are we, my qualities. So I like a cost-benefit analysis, I think it's helpful. but. I like it best when I come from an owner perspective. Does that make sense? The qualities of things that are meaningful in your life. And I would say that these are the things we really want in our life. Yeah, it's nice to have a nice car. But what were the things we said about a car? Give me a feeling of freedom, of power, of excitement. And I would argue that you can have all of those things right now. If you set your life up in a way, you can still have goals. We still need money. We still like nice things. I like nice things. I like money. But if you put it all on that goal, you don't get to enjoy the whole time until you get to that goal. What if it takes you 10 years to become a millionaire? Are you going to be 10 years unhappy until you become a millionaire? I say no. I say enjoy it right now. Let's set, your, let's set my life up. You set your life up in a way where you can feel all these feelings for the entire 10 years until you reach your goal. And not to wait till the end. We really do see it all as a process. What's the longest process we all have? Anyone? High school. High school. I'm sure it feels like it. What's the <laughs> exactly. Mike, how do you know if you're when will you know if you're successful? There's a there's a Middle Eastern saying that says, trust in Allah and tie up your camel. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the universe, spirit, God is going to watch over you, and you also need to take care of yourself. It's like that, uh, it's like that old joke. Uh, the flood started rising, and um, this guy said, I'm not leaving my house, I'm not leaving my house. And uh, a, a policeman drives up and he says, sir, you really need to evacuate. The flood's coming, you have to go. He says, no, no, I'm going to stay. You know, God will take care of me. Gets higher and higher and higher. A boat comes. The, the Coast Guard comes. Hey, you know, well, you got to get out of here. He says, no, God is going to take care of me. Higher and higher, he's standing on his chimney, on his roof. <laughs> and a helicopter comes. 
sir, we really need to evacuate. No, nope, God's going to take care of me. And, well, wouldn't you know it? He drowns and goes up to heaven. And he says, God, you didn't take care of me. What happened? He says, I sent a car. I sent a <laughs>